You're listening to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast, the show that proves no one stumbles upon success ever. With your host, Lou Need. Every Mondays and Thursdays, we deliver cold heart evidence behind the power of a robust morning routine. Get ready to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Lumi Lewis, and today I am honored, I'm excited, elated to have a very special man to the show, John Vong. John is a seasoned sales professional, internet marketer, and with an exceptional track record helping companies grow their clientele and profit. Through 15 years of experience working with CEOs, business owners, marketing leaders of some of of Canada's most successful corporations, John developed a deep understanding of local marketing dynamics and consumer behavior. So he's got the psychology behind it all, y'all. Morning enthusiasts, before we jump right into it, let me ask you, do you know that your skin is not only beautiful, but it is the largest organ of the body? And its main job is to protect, to protect you from bacteria and chemicals. How are you protecting it? Are you adding more harsh chemicals to your skin by using soaps that dry out your skin and strip away your natural moisturizing oils? Boy, do I have the product for you. Two words, royalty hygiene. My number one shop for handcrafted, vegan, eco-friendly soaps made with essential oils to revitalize your skin, especially during the harsh winter months. Y'all, they even have an oat and chai tea soap that will leave your skin soft, supple like a baby's bottom. Get this, the orange hibiscus has antioxidants. That's right, you heard me correctly. Antioxidants to fight off free radicals from your skin. Now, we all know skin is a marker of health and beauty and royalty hygiene is your one-stop beauty routine for youthful, hydrated skin. Check out Royalty Hygiene at www.royaltyhygiene.com. I'll see you in there. John, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Excited to be here and uh, hopefully provide some insight and uh, valuable tips for all your listeners today. Oh, you are awesome. I'm glad you are here. Thank you again for making the time. So let's get to know each other a little bit. So tell me about your journey so far, like to get here. I know you have an extensive background um, with working with big corporations and then it led you to start your own business. But why sales? How did you get into that? So I actually studied uh, my college university degree was in business finance, but my first job outside of school was in advertising sales. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know much about sales, no expertise, no, no background in it. However, I was hungry. So it was my first job. And I found that if you truly believe in what you're selling, and then you perfect the whole skill set of listening, asking and probing and, you know, getting deep in terms of what customers really want, Mm -hmm. then you can provide a a solution or a product or service that caters to them. And once you do that in a very, very, I I guess, structured way with a good system process and belief and affirmation in your mindset, then they believe that you are in it for the right reason. So learning that and perfecting that art going in every single day, positive, really focused on, um, yes, you're going to get rejected in sales on a daily basis, multiple times a day or seven hours a day. (laughs) So how do you, you know, continue doing that with positivity, right? How do you move ahead? So I always looked at like the leaders in the space in whatever organization or whatever industry to get inspiration from them going to all the conferences speaking events and then seeing what they did differently how they evolved and that's what really kept me going for 10 years in advertising sales wow i love that you said you were hungry it was your first job but you were hungry you were hungry to learn you were hungry to like figure out how it is done and how to do it effectively Right. I know I'm looking at you um, right now and you have your background is literally a bookshelf and so colorful. I mean, you have one of my a couple of my favorite books behind you. Um, You have habits there. So it's it really tells me that you're a student of life. 
and you you gotta you have to be right. Yeah, like early days, I wasn't that strong in reading. I was listening to a lot of audio tapes in sales, right, to perfect that, and then going to the conferences. Then I started reading and absorbing a lot more information. And today, it's a lot of blogs, a lot of people that I follow, a lot of communities that I'm part mm -hmm. of. So just evolving and knowing exactly where you're at in the lifespan of your career, business, life, to get inspiration from experts, leaders that have already gone through using their perspective. And that's what the value of books and audio and conferences and people have that you have to retain and utilize because not everyone has great input for your personalized journey. And then if you just grasp one or two tips out of each of these great people that have spent 40 years in that expertise, it's made a difference in your life, right? Like just slowly understand that not everything's going to be inspirational and going to make a huge change, but just slowly plug away. And if you can take one bullet, one point out of that book to move you ahead, that will make a small difference in your life. Yeah. And I know you mentioned earlier that you, you try to get to two books a week, you know, yeah. that's that robust level. Um, and that's not just audio. Like you're literally like the paperback you're going through and you mentioned you're waking up a little a bit earlier to do that. And that's prioritizing learning. That's prioritizing working on you, working on your mindset, because there's, there's really a correlation to your growth. Like it, uh, my business will grow according to um, my level of mindset or how, how I grow myself. And so it's it's very crucial to actually feed the mind. Yeah, and never be stagnant, right? Like when you settle, because I'm ultra curious and I'm always wondering how things would be. Yeah. And I don't mind trying different things, even though I fail 98%, but at least I try, right. right? And that's the whole point of like business ownership and entrepreneurship. There's going to be a lot of rejection, failure. It's how do you persevere? How do you pick yourself up and proceed and grow with the learnings that you've had in terms of rejections to get better, improve? So just learning all these little things have maybe become a better person, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, business owner, and hopefully leader. Yeah. And, and you, you are very passionate about working with entrepreneurs, with smaller businesses, and not so much the big fish, because you've done that for a good portion of your career already. But now your focus is, is working with smaller business. Tell us about that and the transition. Yeah, so in advertising sales, yes, there's only a couple media uh, companies out there. So I learned by being trained from some really good trainers and sales environments, right? So that gave me a really good foundation of how to sell. But then understanding the corporate structure of what I liked and what I didn't like. And the good thing about what I've kind of created here is... I want to serve what resonates with me the most, right? Mm -hmm. Like my parents were business owners. My wife's parents were the, all, a lot of my friends, their families were small business owners, community leaders are co business owners. Like it's all, if you think about the world today, right? A lot of people only look at the big Amazons, Walmarts, you know, Costco's in the world, right? Well, the average person who wants to get ahead is probably entrepreneurs, right? Like the business owners that take on that new journey. Not a lot of them are the, the VC startup Facebook kind of companies, right? That's one in a billion. So if you look at the ratios, I mean, most of them are the trades professionals, the service professionals, the, the ones that went to school, spent 20 years learning that mm -hmm. skill set, worked under someone as an apprentice, and then built something, either buying or starting their own. And that's what I, I wanted to help, right? They actually know, they have a really good abundance of expertise, but they don't know much about digital, right? They know their business inside out and how to service their client. But this whole digital landscape is different and it's evolving so quickly that I wanted to be that, I guess, transitional piece mm -hmm. where they know how to run a business, but they don't know how Google works and how to be positioned on that first page. So that's how I get motivated to help the people that are the roots of every single community neighborhood, those hardworking business owned individuals, as opposed to larger brands. I love that. Yeah. Taking it to the community and actually empowering those small businesses to thrive within those communities. So tell us about what that sales process is. What do you go in and help them with? Yeah, so we're a full-service SEO agency. And what that means is I take a look at what the big brands have done. 
They usually have in-house teams and big agencies deal with bigger brands because of budget. Mm -hmm. What I've done is replicated exactly what the big brands and big in-house companies like Amazon and you know Shopify have done in-house, but trying to serve the smaller guys by offering up every single pillar that's required for SEO. So we have a content team, link building team, strategy team, reputation management team, content team, you know, graphics team, web dev team, all bundled together to have really good synergies and collaboration to optimize on the metrics and performance of what they want out of it, which is typically ranking, more visibility, more traction, more leads, more sales, profit, et cetera. But it's all about building authority and expertise in the business that doesn't know how to do it digitally. And people think it's easy, but it's an expertise that I've harvested in the last eight years to perfect in terms of process systems and people that have to be in alignment to ensure that the results dictate what you're selling. Yeah. So your your work is forever. It's fluid, right? Because the algorithm is forever changing. So when you get a client, you always have to be adaptable and being able to adjust um, for them to rank, say on Google, to work number one. How's that navigation for you? And that's why reading and learning is so critical in this space. Yeah. You have to be an ever hungry kind of person that is wanting to understand the behavior of how search works. I did work at Yellow Pages prior. So I understand how print dictated traditional media. Google kind of replaced Yellow Pages. And so I understood the whole advertising spectrum in terms of what the business owners wanted. And so now Google is now organic, which is very similar to Yellow Pages category driven, but keyword specific. They have white pages in the Yellow Pages portion, which was branded searches, someone knowing the company name. But now most people are keyword specific, right? And therefore there's always competition. There's always new people coming into the marketplace. And there's a lot of people that want fast results quickly. And in reality, if you've been in business, you'll understand that it takes time, a lot of failure, a lot of trial and error. And, you know, not only do you need to be good as a business person, but you got to be savvy and strategic. And that's what it takes to run a really optimized SEO campaign. You got to know what you're doing. And that's what we've been harvesting for the last eight years, just having a good solid track record. Yeah, very nice. Very, very nice. And I know um, I just created a whole funnel here for my business and, and the importance of having you know, knowing what your niche is, knowing what, what your target audience is, knowing how to find them and then serve them. Um, can you elaborate and speak a little bit on, on that and, and the importance of it? Yeah, like understanding who your avatar ideal customer yeah. is, creating that profile and speaking directly to them by answering every single pain point and question that they may have so that it makes you position yourself as a leader. And this applies for funnels and funnels, but also SEO. SEO even more so because every single metric, every single, you know, if you have an email campaign, social media campaign, you have paid ad campaign, behavioral ad campaigns, and then that website is your biggest asset piece. And that's where people you want to drive traffic to, to either extract emails or filling that form or calling you. It has to be in place. So what Google's looking for is why should I rank your website compared to those thousands and millions of other websites competing for the same term as you are. Mm -hmm. So what makes you any different, right? So that's where the authority piece comes in. An SEO campaign or a company that knows what they're doing can help assist these businesses to solidify who they are, who they want to serve, and who they want to be known as in the industry. Yeah. And so you're looking at Google Analytics. You're looking at their previous customer um, demographic to actually drive that that niche in, hone in on it even more, right? Because you're, you're collecting data from all sources. Yeah. So analytics is critical. However, I always look at who is your ideal customer that's a paying customer today that you wanted to track more of. Because if you've only started your business, you don't really know who your ideal customer is. You may think you know who they are, but until they are paying you for a couple months or years, then you kind of know who they are. And I would say wait until you get 10 of those clients to then do a proper SEO campaign because all the content pieces, everything that you're creating should be speaking directly to them. 
And so a lot of people jump into SEO thinking they know who they want to target, but until they actually pay, you might not know who they are until a couple of months or years later. Okay, so get at least 10 paying customers under your belt before embarking on this journey because you want to um, be efficient and take le leverage on that data so that you're not wasting money or time or resources of that, for that matter. And I always would say, learn how to run a business first. Don't perfect marketing and advertising if, because that stuff will break when you start ranking, you start getting leads, but you don't know how to serve a customer and you don't really listen and you don't really know how to take care of them with a product or service that they actually want. Good luck trying to stay afloat, right? So my suggestion to all business owners who are early stages is learn how to run a successful business. Listen, ask, and improve. And that's the only thing that will make you better, right? Yeah. And yes, there's a lot of competitive analysis, pricing strategy, go-to-market strategy. All that is important. But the fundamentals is serve your customers. Listen to them. Ask questions. And any customer service inquiry, get better, improve, right? Once you refine it to a level that you're confident, then you can then focus on other marketing mediums and ch channels to amplify your message. Yeah, because I'm trying, as you were speaking, John, I was thinking about which one comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? So learn to build a business, learn to operate the business, but you need a customer or client to actually go through that pipeline to provide that service. So again, learn how to sell. So that's yeah. the number one skill set I would always tell people because you're the biggest believer. You should be the biggest salesperson in any organization. So if you don't believe in your product, how can you get people to pay for money for the product and service that you're trying to offer, right? So learn how to sell, get some clients. Once you have clients, learn if this is a sustainable business and who you wanna serve. Once you know that, then you create a website and all these marketing mediums and channels to attract more of your ideal customer. Well put. That is very insightful for small business owners and young entrepreneurs is no, learn to sell first and learn how to operate the business before trying to scale too fast. But there, there's a thing that early success that can be um, detrimental too, where you don't know how to handle the level of volume that you're getting the customers and then you, you, can, you lose them if you're not prepared. And so we don't want to risk that as well. So John, thank you so much for sharing that insight. Now I'm curious, now you've been so successful in this space and how long do you, does it take? Yeah, I know for SEO, it's a long haul process, right? It's a, it's a journey. And so for the clients that you're working with, what's the time frame to take them from A to B? Yeah. So it all depends based on where they're at, if it's a brand new website or someone that's more established and who their major competitors are and which terms do they run to rank for, which is either local, national, or international, right? There's a lot of different variations and who you want to be known as as an expert. People want to dream big, but it's not realistic because you can't compete with an Amazon that's been doing it for 20 years with a millions and millions of dollars budget, right? Versus yourself bootstrapping it maybe with a very limitation of budget and resources. So it has to be realistic. And I always tell people that, you know, learn how to run a business, make mistakes. You probably spend a lot of money in advertising and frustrated with the return. So what are you looking for ultimately? Be realistic with that. So with me, I always ask customers, what is your expectation? And I'll tell you if it's realistic or not. <laughs> and I always tell people, I've had clients rank in a month. I also had taken clients three plus years to rank based on competition, where they're at in terms of brand new or established and which terms they want to rank for. But it takes time because what Google's looking for is matching the website with the user intent. And they don't want to have websites that are new to be ranked when they're not established as experts, right? right? So you as a new business owner, how do you expect to rank when there's 10 or 100 other competitors been around for five or 10 years? Maybe they have done SEO or not, but in Google's eyes, you're brand new. Mm -hmm. So be realistic with all this. Yeah expectations keep them level now i'm curious john about your morning routine how do you get up dress up and show up 
Yeah, so I wake up earlier than my family. I usually just have hot water or tea. Mm -hmm. And then I start with meditation. So just being grateful and just happy life, right? Like how lucky I am to be living in, I live in Canada. So, you know, freedom, peace, and not having to worry about like the necessities in life. And then of course, it's all about like, why am I doing what I'm doing? So what's my purpose, right? How can I improve? And looking back at yesterday or previous month or today, how can I get better? So then I do that for a couple minutes, just slow down. And then I go on with reading. And I would read for like an hour or so before I make my breakfast, right? So all this is all about my routine, which is all about growing and learning. I feel like I'm very mindful early day in the morning, which allows me to read and absorb and really understand the books in a deeper level, not just passing by and reading it. I take notes. I try to learn a couple points every day so that I can utilize in the day, day-to-day -day activity or week-to-week -week activity. And then I share that knowledge with my team or my people, or my peers. And then hopefully that uh, ingrains in a good habit, right? I either use it for the rest of my life or not, but I'll continue trying different things all the time from my learnings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so crucial to feed the mind, just as we feed the body. We have to feed the mind and you're exemplifying that because you actually wake up earlier because you want to be able to fit that in, to fit an hour of reading in. And in your your line of work and even being an entrepreneur mindset it really make or break you right so tell us about the importance of mindset especially for young entrepreneurs yeah i think it's critical and it depends on where you're at in your journey if you have some work experience it's different from working with stable income mm -hmm. than sacrificing and moving to, you know, entrepreneur where you're like commission only, right? Like you're kind of solopreneur. It's on you to survive. And this, it's interesting because in North America, people are so used to working with stability. When you go to third world countries, my parents are from Vietnam. If you go to like China or if you go to Malaysia and Indonesia or Philippines, all of them are business run entrepreneurs that survive. Or India, like all these countries strive on just making sure that you move ahead, right? To support your family. And most of them are entrepreneurs because there's no social assistance, there's no government grants, and there's no big employers out there, yeah. right? It's survival at its grazes and it's hyper competitive. So what do they strive on? Relationships, connections, and unique, like everyone serves the same product, right? There's only limitations on that. So how do they differentiate? They know their community inside out, the people, that they serve and they know have a great location, right? It's so important. That's why I talk about fundamentals. I talk about like when you run a business, take care of the fundamentals, have that strong mindset of serving others, listening, adding value and selling on yourself. Like people buy because of you ultimately. Product and service will go, you know, come and go because there's millions of other products and services they can choose. But ultimately, they want to buy from you. And therefore, you have to be, have a really good understanding of what you bring to the table, how you're different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well put. It's differentiating yourself, setting yourself apart and setting yourself, making sure you're different in that way, but adding tremendous value giving back and contributing to the society as a whole and, and, and having that purpose too, knowing knowing what it is and being passionate about it like you can't teach passion you know it, it it's innate it, it, it brews inside and so i'm excited to see that you are so passionate about helping small entrepreneur um, small business owners and entrepreneurs all around and you it's a, it's a great story i really really appreciate the analogy with third world countries you know they they're thriving on survival and that survival mindset you gotta have it as an entrepreneur that thriving like you can't you're, you're great today but tomorrow is not guaranteed you gotta be hungry day in and day out as you started off saying you were hungry to begin with that hunger has to be to stay with you to actually make it because there are ups and downs for sure <laughs> yeah and most businesses are either vc backed and that's a very small percentage like startups but most businesses are the mom and pop shops, family run in every single community. And most of them sacrifice their livelihood, their savings yeah. to run this business. So they put everything in it for their family. So that's why I mean by like, I want to support these people because 
they understand how hard it is to earn a living or, you know, have a paycheck that's unstable, especially during this pandemic, right? Like they're the ones that were hit the hardest, yet Amazon was still open. Walmart was still taking on deliveries. It's crazy, but they're the ones that were the, you know, the lifeline of every single community, yet they were the ones impacted the most. So I always say support your local business owners because they're the ones that need it the most, yet they're the hardest working people that if you peel that onion back, they're humans like you and I, and they're great humans because yeah. they're sacrificing a huge component of their livelihood to serve others. How do you encourage them to come out of the pandemic? Because I, I, there's a couple of, you probably working with multitude of them, um, small business owners that were hit badly last year of, of 2020. How do you, when you go in, begin that process of re regrowth, rebranding, because a lot of them had to go from brick and mortar to online. And that's where you come in, right? So how has that transition been from the pandemic to actually rebuilding? Yeah, it all starts with the mindset and being optimistic, right? And knowing that business ownership, there's going to be ups and downs. And yes, last year was a down, but things will look up. So you have to be positive and you have to have a roadmap and you have to be willing to try something new, right? More people than ever in front of a computer today. More people are shopping and the behaviors have shifted. So you need to be acknowledged with where your customers are now consuming your product and service and how they navigate and shop throughout that buyer journey. And once you realize that there's a huge opportunity and you're not even around when during that whole behavior of the shopping experience, then there's gaps that you can fill. And this is a small piece. Like the SEO component is a piece as well as other forms of marketing and understanding where you fit and how you can capitalize on it can create a lot of abundance and opportunity for all small business owners. Very nice. Yeah. Finding, filling the gap, finding that hole. That's good to hear. Um, tell us, John, how can we connect with you? How can we find you? Yeah. So you can check out my website. It's localseosearch.ca. Uh, we're based in Toronto, Canada, but we serve clients all over North America, UK, and Australia. And check out our website. We also have a podcast called Local SEO Today. Uh, it's a lot of fun because I try to educate and, and bring on some guests in, in some different forms of expertise. And for me, it's all about being passionate. I'm all a lifelong learner. I really own the small business owner journey. I want to help support them to become better, right? Like good business owners to be better in terms of that digital space. Very nice. I definitely I will um, share that with the audience. I mean, it's just a brief recap, John. It, it's learning how to sell as a small business, learning how to operate, learn your business first. And I love that you said to listen, to ask, listen, and then execute, learn to see what your market needs and then serve them the best that you could. And then that constant improvement, you brought on that self-improvement, but also improving your processes, your services, your product, so that you can be the authority figure in yeah. that space. It's knowledge well said. I thank you so much for coming and joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. It's been a delight. <laughs> All right, morning enthusiasts, that's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. If you love the best morning routine ever podcast, we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes or Google Play. While you're at it, tell a friend about the show. Be sure to visit bestmorningroutineever.com and our Facebook group to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic free bonus content. Until next time, 